welcome to this edition by Union Solidarity International and we are talking about all things in China today. Over the last couple of months USI has been trying to reach out to a, a Chinese audience and to work with labour organisations in China to help get the message of worker struggles out to the widest possible audience and I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by two comrades from Hong Kong today from the China Labour Bulletin. I'll pass it over to you guys to introduce yourselves. Okay, thanks Andrew. My name is Jeffrey Prothel. I'm the Communications Director of China Labour Bulletin. And this is uh, Jia Yi from CLB2. I work as the News Analyst at China Labour Bulletin. Well, thank you very much for joining me today and I think Gentlemen, you will agree that there's a lot of misperceptions, a lot of misunderstandings and a, a lack of understanding in general about what is going on in China with particular respect to workers' struggles. And of course, many of the people watching this YouTube clip may be aware of the work of the, the China Labour Bulletin, which has done absolutely outstanding work in shining a light on independent worker struggles and there's a couple of struggles that I would like to talk to you about today. Now the first one being a story I read during the week about the crisis of workers within the healthcare sector and in particular how unions, the official unions, are not representing them in the way that they should be doing. Gentlemen, do you want to just tell our viewers a little bit more about what is actually going on in some areas of the health sector in China at the moment? Well, the, the issue has come to, uh, the, uh, it's got in the headlines in China for the last couple of weeks because there have been, I think, two or three assaults on doctors and nurses in hospitals in China. And this has got a lot of people talking about how can we protect uh, healthcare workers and so on. You know, the authorities are promising to improve security and people are talking about we've got to resolve the issue of the high cost of healthcare and corruption among hospital officials. But the one issue that no one seems to be talking about is what is the trade union doing? And the reason for this is sadly because the union of hospitals in China is not a healthcare workers union as you would understand it. It's, it's really part of the management structure at the hospital. And so the, the question that we're trying to raise there is, well, why isn't the union of the hospital doing a job to better protect the workers and to improve pay and condition for nurses, auxiliary workers, janitors, uh, and security guards there. And um, coincidentally, Jai has just been talking to one of his old classmates who is a nurse um, about this problem. So we, we've got some first hand insights as well. So, what are sure. you want? Sure. Uh, uh, my uh, former classmate works as a nurse for over 10 years. And she, uh, according to her, uh, sorry, according to she, she said that. Um, uh, she she knows that she's a union member, but um, the union she knows uh, what uh, what the union does actually was uh, sending out toilet papers during holidays and arrange visiting trips in the city and and nothing and nothing more. So uh, she said the union could have played a more uh, active and more proactive role. Uh, in this uh, very uh, in this uh, hospital environment, which has been becoming more, more hostile, and uh, the patients have been becoming more impatient with the healthcare workers. Um, so, I mean, from her experience, um, has she noticed um, an increase in uh, problems with, with patients and violence in, in the hospital? Uh, that's for sure. That's for sure. Um, according to a very recent interview with a, um, uh, I think it's a, a, a legislative member, a council member in China, 
uh, him, uh, he, uh, the, the, the member himself is a doctor, and uh, he just visited a, uh, a nurse that, uh, who, who, who just got assaulted and, 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 and literally paralyzed by, by those attackers. And he said that uh, during the last 13 years, there, have, uh, there, there are 30 doctors and nurses that have been killed. And in 2014 alone, seven of them are, in, uh, are injured. So there has clearly has been an increasing number of doctors and nurses being attacked in the hospital in China. And I, I think if there are um, healthcare union members out there who are interested in this problem, please do get in contact with us and tell us your experience of, you know, ideas on how to organize healthcare workers. Because I think this initiative is sorely needed in China. Well, thanks, gentlemen, for that response to the question with respect to the situation facing healthcare workers. And it's not an unusual situation facing healthcare workers, unfortunately, as we know. Attacks on emergency staff, on doctors and nurses is a, a not too irregular occurrence actually happening in a lot of hospitals, even within the UK, which I know very well. Gentlemen, I know that, of course, trade unions are sort of constituted in China as an official part of the state, perform a very different function from what trade unions do in the UK and in North America and Australia, for example. But can I ask, has there been a change in the terms and conditions of health sector workers over the last five to ten years, say, as a result of the economic transformation? And has the official trade union movement played any role or a significant role in helping to improve terms and conditions and the workplace environment, if indeed it has improved? Um, I would guess that the trade union hospitals has played zero role in um, helping improve um, conditions for hospital workers. I mean, we had a, another case last year of um, uh, auxiliary workers and security guards at a hospital in, in Guangzhou who had a, a long-running dispute over terms and conditions and the trade union of the hospital did absolutely nothing to help. And, and certainly I think conditions for healthcare workers have worsened noticeably over the last five years because of you know, the most hospitals in China now are highly commercialized, they're entirely profit driven and the pay and working conditions of hospital employees is, is a very low priority for management at the moment. Thank you for that response, Jeff. I'd just like to shift the conversation on, if you don't mind, to a recent example of a, a labour activist who has had a a pending court trial. Uh, I use the word pending carefully because he was supposed to be in court and then it got dismissed and I'm not entirely sure what the situation is. But it relates to a trade union activist who protested, I understand, against the, the closure of a workplace and as a result of that protest he has been incarcerated for the best part of a year. Do you want to tell our viewers the situation of Wu why he was arrested, and where is his current legal case at the moment? Well, he was detained because, um, as, as you said, he, he, amongst several hundred workers, took part in a, a demonstration against the closure of the factory in Shenzhen and the failure of the management to discuss compensation for laid-off workers. Um, he's been in detention now for about nine months, and... His trial, he's going to be tried for a public order offence, which is usually what workers get put on trial for in these cases, like blocking traffic or causing some kind of social disruption. Um, but the interesting thing about this case is that it's been delayed for so long, and, and then it's got so much support from uh, ordinary workers, from labour activists um, across China. Um, 
and Jai was at the courthouse. Um, so maybe you can tell people firsthand what you saw. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, about 50 people actually was at the first hearing of uh, this labor activist named Wu Guizhi in Shenzhen, in China. Uh, and uh, the court uh, was supposed to hold the hearing at 2.30 p.m., although uh, they delayed the hearing uh, uh, with no reasons and uh, to, to uh, 3 p.m., uh, to 3.30 p.m., and then they said, we have to cancel the, the hearing. And, and that is when the, uh, the, the workers and the supporters from labor NGOs got really angry and they stormed to the petitioning office inside the court and demanded that the hearing must be held at the very same day. Uh, and uh, around 4.30, uh, the court uh, has to uh, get the prosecutors and everybody ready and to, to uh, hold the hearing for, for about one hour. Um, and then, then, of course, one hour you can't complete a court case, and so they, they scheduled another hearing, which was last week, right? Yeah, and they and, rescheduled again. And then they cancelled that. <laughs> And then they, and at the moment, we don't know if there's a scheduled date or not. But it's obvious that the game that they're playing, they just don't want all of these uh, supporters and labor activists to be at the trial when he eventually does appear before the judge. Well, well thank you for that update. And of course, we've shared the story of Wu on our social media streams, courtesy of your good selves passing on that information and story and, and we will continue to shine a light on Wu's case eh, who was protesting of course along with several hundred as you say against a, a factory closure. I would just like to thank you gentlemen for your contribution today. I hope it is part of many conversations that we have together on what is actually going on in China and how a Western audience in particular, although not exclusively, can gain a greater understanding about what is actually happening on the ground in China. As I said in my opening comments, there's still a lot of misperceptions, misconceptions and misunderstandings, and I would include myself in that. So conversations like today and sharing each other's information to the widest possible audience helps break through some of that. So I just want to thank you once again for participating in this web conference with USI gentlemen and we look forward to working with the China Labour Bulletin in the months and indeed the years to come. Thank you very much. Thank you and we look forward to working with you.